الحمد لله ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فهو المهتدي ومن يضلل فلا هادي له اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها كل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار بورك في الموهوب وشكرت الواهب وبلغ اشده ورزقت بره وجعل خيرا على امه محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make this gathering gathering full of rahmah and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bestow his mercy over this crowd and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that when we leave we leave with our sins forgiven and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless the brothers who arrange for this especially the the father brother Muhyiddin for the aqiqa of his son Farooq so we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make this kid good for the ummah of Muhammad. And we ask him to grow up righteous, him and his sister. And we ask him to be of benefit to us and to his family and to his parents and to the ummah as a whole. And what's happening tonight is a sunnah from the sunan of Sahih Bukhayri Hadi, a sunnah from the sunnah of the best man who came with the best guidance, Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who came to bring light to this world where people are so indulged in darknesses and they can't escape. There is no one who wants to live, to live and stay in darkness. No one wants to be chained his whole life. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent his messengers and he sent his prophets to break those chains and to bring and to set the people free from the world and from the material, to set them free from their desires and from their inclinations. Allah wanted good for his people and he wanted good for his creations. فَأَبَا أَكْثَرُ النَّاسِ إِلَّا كُفُورًا But most people choose the other way. And a lot of people, وَمَا أَكْثَرُ النَّاسِ And most people want to stay kuffar and they want to stay the way they are, off the path and away from their Lord. Because they know the path and the way to God is difficult. حُفَّتْ بِالْمَكَارِهِ وَالْجَنَّةُ حُجِبَتْ بِالْمَكَارِهِ So it's very important to understand that this gathering here we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it for his pleasure. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us and to, le to let us leave today with more iman and more peace and more tranquility in our hearts. Inshallah, there is uh, someone who wants to take the, the shahada. Come over, man. Why are you waiting? How are you doing? 
Right. Everything good? Yeah. They talk to you? Yeah. They explain to you? Yeah. You understand? No. <laughs> <laughs> what you want to do with, right? You're ready for it. I've been, I think I've been born that way. Good. Just repeat after me. Raise your, look at the people in trouble. Raise your finger this way. Ashadu. Ashadu. Allah. Allah. Ilaha. Allah. Illa. Illa. Repeat. Ashadu. Ashadu. Allah. Allah. Ilaha. Ilaha. Illa. Illa. Allah. Allah. Wa ashadu. Ashadu. Anna. Anna. Muhammadan. Muhammadan. Rasulu. Rasulu. Allah. Allah. I bear witness. I bear witness. No one. No one is worthy is of, worship of worship. But Allah. But Allah. And I bear witness. I bear witness that Muhammad. That Muhammad is the messenger. The messenger of Allah. Of Allah. Allahu Akbar. Allah. Allah. Welcome in, man. Welcome in. Yes. Thank you. Tonight, inshallah, we continue with our book that we've been discussing, and that is the the difference between the friends of Allah and the friends of the devil. And it's very important to understand that people are divided into two. All people in the world fall into one of two categories. There is no third. Even though many other things they have divided and categorized into too many things. So you find Republicans and Democrats and right and left and in the middle and the green and the yellow and the brown. They divided Asma'un ma sammaytumu ma anzal Allahu biha min sultan in hiya illa asma'un sammaytumuha antum wa ababu These are just things that are created to categorize people huh? and to divide them and to create caste system and levels between people even though Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the Lord of the world created them equal Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created them equal they come from one father and from one mother. And that is we as Muslims believe. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that's something that all Muslims understand. Ya ayyuhan nasu inna khalaqnakum min dhakarin wa unta. O people, we've created you from one single male and one single female. Adam and Eve. Adam and Hawa. That is the origin of all mankind. So they are equal. They are equal in their creation. And they are equal in what, where they come from. And they are equal in how they were formed. And they were equal in how they were created. Then they come to this world. And you find the people dividing and putting themselves into different categories. And they have categorized themselves into a different caste systems. There are countries and their religions in the world today that they have this thing called the caste system that a level, four levels, the last level of the caste system and these caste systems it's not like people, animals, then trees, then this, then dirt, la. these are people. They are people who put themselves in different categories. Of course, it's not that it's not going to be the poor or the weak or the oppressed who are going to create this system. It's the people in power. And those in power, when they create such systems, they create them to suit their own benefits. Because they're in power and they want to make sure that we have to create a method. And we have to create an ideology. And we have to create a mentality. And we have to set a system that's going to keep us where we are. They're not going to create a system that's going to get people to compete with them. And that is the fact with all people who make laws. Those who make laws that will be applied to the rest of the, of the society are people in power. And their main interest is to stay there. And their main interest not to have competition. 
So their systems and their religions, and they're considered one of the biggest religions in the world, where they have this caste system, and it's people, they have put people in different categories. Don't be surprised when I tell you the last part of the last category of those people who were created from Adam and Eve, from the same father and mother, and it's their brothers who are putting them in there. It's called the untouchable. The untouchable. Not because they're so precious that no one should touch them. You see, if you have a diamond, or you have very expensive piece of jewelry, or very expensive car, when people even come close to, when they walk by, you get scared. If you have something so precious, you usually put it in a box, huh, in a glass box, so no one can touch it. They're going to take from its value. So you put it in a box. If you go to a museum, or you go to any of those places, which I've never been to, but you hear about, you find these things in boxes, huh? in glass boxes, in whatever boxes, in metal boxes, so people will not be touching them because people are interested in touching. So these untouchable, this category or cat, it's not because they're precious so they don't want anyone to touch them. They consider them so dirty by default. Yani not they came to the world fine like them and then they got dirty. They played in the mud or they jumped in the river. As you all know, the famous river. La. Those people from the point they're born, they're untouchable because of the society or the caste or the level they're born in. Untouchable, yani, if you touch them, you are impure. They are so dirty that you should not, dirty and not even only physical dirt, but spiritual and mental dirt. So touching them is really shameful. That exists in today's society in modern world. In modern world. That is what they call the Far East. And it's not any better in the Far West. Maybe it's not exactly they're going to say, this is the level and this is the level. No, yeah, and someone hold the curtain there. Someone drop. It's not that way. Still the same way, even in the most modernized, most advanced societies in the world, you still have a caste system. You still have a caste system where you will find a neighborhood for this color, and a neighborhood for this color, and a neighborhood for this kind of people, and a neighborhood for this race, and if someone from the other race moves in into this race neighborhood, the prices will drop down. And if you go to looking for a house, huh, like happen, and some people here can testify for this, first the house for sale for a few months, then you go to buy, you knock on the door, once they see your face, oh, the house is not for sale anymore. That's happening. And that happens to us, and to Muslims, and to other people. So it's not any better in the West. They have lied to you when they told you that there is no racism. They lied to you when they told you there is no discrimination. Huh? If there is no racism and there is no discrimination, then why still they, they're still having on their applications for every job, for every business, for every governmental paperwork, they, you still have to tell them what color you are. So they're still stuck in this predicament. Islam came to say no more. Islam came to say no more. So Salman al-Farisi and Suhaib al-Rumi and Bilal al-Habashi, huh? and Mu'ad al-Ansari, Mu'ad al-Makki, and uh, Sa'd ibn Mu'ad al-Ansari, those were equal under La ilaha illallah. Islam came to eliminate that. Do you find discrimination amongst the Muslims in Muslim countries? Indeed, yeah. But not because they're following Islam, because they're ignorant of Islam. And the Prophet ﷺ said that the people were created like Asnan al mishd uh, like the teeth of a comb. You know the teeth of the comb, they're all one level. Uh, a comb that has too many levels, you won't use it, even for your pet. It won't work. 
So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we're studying this book, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says people are divided into two categories. That's it. That is the categorization that Allah set, the Lord, from so over seven heaven over his throne. These are the two categories he set. There is no third. Believers and disbelievers. You find him making mockery of the Muslims and infidels and disbelievers. Well, and you talk to the same person who's saying, why you're using all these terms? He said, you can't get to heaven without that. Huh? Without going through Jesus Christ. Well, that's, you got me out of that. You already got me out of heaven. You can't get into heaven if your mother is not a Jew. Well, you already got me out of heaven. So what's the difference when you use it and I use it? Again, it's the same reason. Some people have that right. Some people don't. Same categorization. That is why we talk. And that's why we need to express, and that's why we need to teach the people the religion of Islam. The guy wanted to burn the Quran. Well, he didn't, but that's not the end of the story. That tells you there is a fundamental disease and misunderstanding and problem these people have. Yani, there was a study done for 3,400 Americans about their religion IQ. Not about white people about Islam, or I should say, white people about Islam. La. It's not about people asking them about other religions. La. It's people they're asking them about their own religions. And the funny thing that the study found, came, up with, came out with, the people who are most knowledgeable of Christianity, who? Huh? The atheists and the agonists. The atheists are most knowledgeable of Christianity, not the, the white belt. Yeah, any those Christian, hardcore, right-wing, uh, evangelical, they were the most actually ignorant of their religion. They were most ignorant of Christianity. So all these things you see, it's all about talk. And Islam also comes and say, huh? لِمَ تَقُولُ مَا لَا تَفْعَلُونَ كَبُرَ مَقْتًا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ أَنْ تَقُولُ مَا لَا تَفْعَلُونَ Why you say that which you don't act accordingly? Why you talk and you don't act? It's a big crime in the sight of Allah to speak without acting. So this person who wanted to burn the Quran, and those people who wanted to help him, and those millions who supported him, it really did not harm us. Actually, it benefited us so much. We, the Muslims, are so happy with the outcome. Okay? We're so happy with the outcome. Because he had made publicity for the Muslims all over. There is no newspaper, there is no news channel, there is no website, but talked about this. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And that's what we believe. Why is it you did not want to, to burn the, the Grand Sohub of the, of, the, of the Sikhs? Or the books of the Hindus? Or you dare to burn the Torah, the, the, the Torah, the Old Testament? You dare. It's not because you have to understand there is a major difference between all the religions of the world and Islam. That's why the war is on Islam, not on anything else. Very important to understand and pride yourself to be Muslim. Why is it everyone always talking about terrorism? And here we are, we've been living here for years and years, and some of you or a lot of you are born here. You never even burned free a match. You never even hit a dog. So why they're insisting and persisting and continuously talking about Muslims are bad people? Because their goal is not the Muslims, it's Islam itself. Their goal is to destroy this religion and they can't. This religion is growing. 
This woman, when they interviewed her about the Quran, some white American woman who seems to know nothing about anything, she said, they asked her, what do you think about burning? She said, I really don't care. And I don't understand why this guy wants to burn some people's religious book. And actually, since he decided to burn it, I decided to read it. <laughs> I want to know now why he wants to burn. <laughs> this is the religion of Allah. We believe down deeply in our hearts that this is the religion of Allah. Because if you, if you bring the strongest man in the world, and you keep hammering him days and nights, Poor guy, will collapse, will drop, will give in, will give up. This religion been hammered for years already. If any principle or any religion or any ideology, where is communism? Huh? Where is communism? Communism that controlled and ruled the world few years, few years ago. Where is it? Huh? Scattered here and there few duwailat and few small country here and there, small people who have no worth are still adopting communism, small parties here and there. Where is communism? <coughs> Hammered. And applied to everything else. This religion, the religion of Allah, that's why it's still strong. Still strong. And the more they hammer it, the stronger it gets, and the more persistent, and the people get to appreciate their religion even more. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised to preserve His book, and thus He promised to preserve His deen. This deen of Allah is preserved. This deen came 1400 years. The Quran, our book, came 1400 years, still the same book. Thousands of thousands of people every year finish memorizing the book in their hearts, letter by letter, vowel by vowel. It's the book of Allah is preserved. There are people who can tell you the Quran who heard it from their teacher, or who read it on their teacher, who read it on his teacher, who read it on his teacher, all the way to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. All the way with continuous chain. There is no religion in the world that has this. Continuous chain. From a person to a person with the names. Huh? With their names. And with their biographies. And when they were born. And when they died. And where they lived. And what they said. And what they did. Chains. Golden chains. Sound solid chains. So there is no place to manipulate this book. And there is no way to manipulate this religion. It will continue, and it will rise, and it will grow. So that's what we call on those who have taken a job in fighting Islam. We tell them, learn about it. And how many people, they fought Islam because they saw so-and-so is doing it, and they saw their neighbor doing it, and they saw their preacher or priest doing it, and their leader doing it. And when they got to learn about it, they adopted it, and they accepted it. And recently, in Switzerland, or whatever you say that, Switzerland, Switzerland, when the guy from the parliament, a red right wing, he found the minarets, building masajid, building mosque, putting a minaret over a mosque, he found that. And he rallied for that. And he went on the street screaming for that. And they passed the law. And suddenly, he's Muslim. Suddenly he becomes Muslim. And he becomes activist. Not a Muslim like me and you. We are Muslims and we come in Jum'ah and we pray and then we leave. No one will, will see us. La. He becomes Muslims and he takes the path of Muhammad Sallallahu inviting to the deen of Allah. Because he realized, رُبَّ ضَارَّةِ النَّافِعَةِ He realized that this is the truth. This is the deen of Allah. Our book is preserved.
The same book, 1400 years ago, still the same book you find on the shelves today in India or in America or in China or in, uh, in Canada or in South America. The same Quran, the same book with the same words. Got to be the deen of Allah. People cannot preserve such thing. People cannot contain, maintain such thing. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has divided the people into two categories. Believers and disbelievers. Believers, those who submit to Him. Believers, those who obey Him. Believers, those who adopt His way. He created you. So who would know you better than Him? If you go to buy a machine, if you buy a Sony fridge, if they make them, you're not going to look for a Sanyo manual, Sony machine, you look for Sony manual. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa lillahi al-mathal al-a'la created you. You were manufactured. You were created. Allah made you. You did not come here on your own. You're not so tough as they make you feel like. Huh? Today they're searching and they're researching and they're trying their best. Huh? No more getting old. Huh? No more death. No more this. No more that. And some people get excited. Why are you excited? Most probably when they, if they, if Allah allows them, يعني, as they think, to get to that point, most probably you will be dead. So what are you excited about? It's not even going to work for you. You see, that's what people are so, today, billions and billions of dollars are invested in that. Invested in how to keep people alive. Why? Because they're afraid of what's next. Not because they're so happy here. Yeah, and, and I do this test. Tomorrow, huh? wherever you work, wherever you're going, say I'm going to ask 10 people, what's up? What's going on? See how many people are going to tell you, great! See how many people are gonna, they're going to tell you, my life is awesome! We don't hear those words anymore. Great, awesome, beautiful, no more. Those words are not used anymore as if they dropped from the dictionary. Even the dictionary they corrupt. <laughs> you understand? So why is it you're so concerned about me making people live longer and longer and longer? If they're not happy. Yeah, and you, when you are in, 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 a, in a period of time where you are happy and you feel comfortable and all that, you know, situation and a scenario and a condition and a time this and that wedding family happy occasion you really don't want it to end but if most of our lives are suffering and struggling this dunya daru shaqa this dunya is a house of suffering there is no comfort in this dunya it doesn't matter who you are whether you're rich or you're poor. Don't ever think that the rich people are happy. If you're poor, or you're average, or as they say, you're middle class, huh? don't think rich people are, are poor, are happy. As one said in an article, he said, a lot of the millionaires suffer. You know why? He said because they try to live the life of the billionaires. <laughs> That's the reality. When a poor person tries to live the life of the rich people, he's in debt. And he has no house. And he's evicted. And they, they repo his car. And he's begging. Because he thought he can live the life huh? of some people over him. Do not wish for what Allah has preferred some over others. Don't wish. Allah given you what He given you. That is the best for you. Innahu alimun hakim. Alim. Allah knows. 
what's good for you and what's bad. That's why Alim came before Hakim. So it's very important to understand. Inshallah, in the next series we will talk about the names of Allah and we will talk about the orders of the names of Allah in the ayat. Why this time came before this? Why Alim came before Hakim? Why this become, be, 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 came before that? Why Rahim before Ghafoor? And you will be amazed. As they said, they said if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rafa'a anka hijab al ghayb if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would have taken away from your eyes the inability to see the unseen. Yeah. If Allah gave you the power to know why things happen in your life. Let's keep it in your life. In your life. A lot of us think we're so big and we're so huge. And we're so important. One study showed they are probably a hundred million Earths, like our Earth in the universe. A hundred million Earths. Billahi Ali. Tell me where you are. Doesn't matter how big you think you are. Where you are in this universe. If they're probably a hundred million Earths like ours, you're nothing. The world existed before you and it's going to exist after you. So whatever you do in this world is for you. You're not changing much. So, it's very important for us to understand why we're here. And why we are in this world. And why we, we exist. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed his book and sent his messengers to follow. And you look at the religion of Islam and I always say that. Every other religion in the world is named after a person. Is named after a tribe. It's named after indigenous people. It's named after an area. Hindus, Buddhism, Taoism, Christianity, Judaism, every religion. Islam is not named after anyone. Islam is not named after a tribe. Islam is not named after country. Islam is not named after a person. Islam is an action. That's what Allah wants from you. Action. Islam means to submit. Action. The Muslim lives his life huh, contributing to humanity. The Muslim is not consumer all the time. The Muslim contributes more than he consumes. The Muslim is here huh, like the tree. Gives fruit. If there is no fruit, gives shade. If there is no shade, gives wood. Always of benefit. And the only way you can achieve that is by living according to the book that Allah sent. So Allah created you and He sent with you a book, a manual. That's how you operate. How you operate. So they said, if Allah was to give you the ability to see why things happen, then you would have, you would have been much more satisfied with what he inflicted you with. Yeah. Example. You're poor. You say, why Allah did not give me a lot of money like he gave so and so and so and so and so. 
if Allah would have given you the ability to know why, you would have not wished to have what so and so has, and you would ask to be more poor. But your wisdom cannot reach there. Allah did not want to show you everything why, because He wants to test you. He wants to test you. Some people, they're so poor, they're happy. Some people so poor, always complaining. Some people so poor, always working hard to get rich. That's all they want, to be rich. He doesn't care how he does it. Some people so poor, they kill themselves, commit suicide. And vice versa. As I said, don't think that rich people are happy. Rich people, a rich man, depressed. Why? He's so scared he's going to be poor. <laughs> Do you think when someone has 10 million dollars, he's going to always have 10 million dollars? Of course not. So he's always concerned that he might be poor, he might get poor. He's always depressed how he's going to keep those 10 millions, 10 millions or grow. He gets depressed when he sees someone who has 11 million. Depressed. That is when he's away from Allah. نِعْمَ الْمَالُ الصَّالِحِ الْعَبْدِ الصَّالِحِ إِنَّمَا الدُّنْيَا لِأَرْبَعَةِ نَفَرِ Prophet said, This dunya for four types of people. رَجُلٌ آتَاهُ اللَّهُ عِلْمًا وَمَالًا The very best of them is a person whom Allah given him wealth. So you see Islam, Islam is not a communist religion. And Islam is not a capitalist religion. And Islam is not a socialist religion. Yeah, any exact definition of those things. Islam is made and sent by the Lord. Everything else created by us. So it got to have flaws and defects. And when something comes from the perfect, it got to be perfect. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the perfect, only sends what's perfect. So, the Prophet said, the best of those four types of people, a man who is given wealth and given knowledge. So he knows how to spend this wealth or given knowledge first. Hadith says, ilm wa mal. Ilm came first. Now, ilm, knowledge and wealth. So he knows how to spend the wealth because of the knowledge. Khalas. That is the best and the worst. A man given wealth or not. No wealth and no ilm. No wealth and no knowledge. Between them, someone who is given knowledge and no wealth. So he said, if Allah would have given me, I would do like the one who has knowledge and wealth. They're equal in the reward. So why is, why you still complain? Huh? Yeah, someone says, Allah, he is, uh, he's doing so much, he's giving too much money for the, for the deen, he's helping, and Allah did not give me, and I really want to give. Don't ask for that. Don't ask for that. Don't say, I wish if I have like so and so, huh? so I will yeah, he say it with that intensity. Even though the hadith, the hadith makes it clear that that person who's given knowledge, uh, but no wealth says, I wish if I have wealth, so I will do what he did. But remember, the only reason he was able to say that, and he would do because of the knowledge. So if you got no knowledge, don't wish for money. If you got no knowledge, don't wish to say, Allah is so and so brother, Allah had given him and opened doors for him, and look what he's spending building masajid and da'wah and buying Qur'ans and... and uh, if you have no knowledge, don't say that because you don't know what happens to you if Allah gives you money. 
Because you might end up like the fourth one. What is the fourth one? The third, Allah said, the Prophet said, وَرَجُلٌ آتَاهُ اللَّهُ مَالًا وَلَمْ يُؤْتِهِ عِلْمًا a man whom Allah given him wealth, but did not give him knowledge. So he doesn't know how to spend it. The fourth, a man who did not get money or knowledge. So he said, if I have money, I will do what so and so is doing. Is he referring to the first one or to the third one? To the third one. And this is the worst. So if you have no knowledge and you're not equipped, huh? زين للناس حب الشهوات فناطير المقنطرة So don't wish for that If you're not well equipped with علم to know how to spend money when you receive it don't wish for it because how many people when they wished for it to do good once they got it huh? once they got it no صدقة no زكاة not even paying what he's obligated to pay فتنة so the Muslim lives, bottom line, lives, the believer is the one who gonna live his life the way his Lord wants him. Look at the world today, most people don't do that. That's why most people are miserable. That's why in the last hundred years, huh, they talk about Islam, terrorists and this and that and we kill people and we cannot wait just to get a chance to be alone with you, we gonna slaughter you. That's what they say and that's how they promote it. That's how they promote. You know how many times, me personally, huh? And I'm a person who, who boxed for 10 years, huh? Don't you any look at me and say, this guy is uh, huh? with a beard, he, he doesn't know it, he's a dentist. Huh? Have you seen me taking a tooth out? <laughs> it takes muscles, man. All right. How many times I could physically yeah, and he bring the guy who's being racist and discriminate and making comments against me, who's in front of me. Take him down. But I don't. And I can. And a lot of you can. And Muslims are tough. Muslims don't, don't, don't step on a Muslim's foot. لا تسقني ماء حياتي بذلة بل فسقني بالعز كأس الحنظلي That is how Muslims think Even though it was عنترة who said that huh? عنترة من الجاهلية But this is how Muslims live because Allah with them وأن العزة لله ولرسوله وللمؤمنين The honor is for Allah and the messenger and the believers so live as honorable man. So how many times I got the chance to do that, but I choose not to. I choose not to. So this, and I'm sure a lot of you the same story. To a point where they try to drive you off the road on a bridge. لا بأس. كما يقول إخواننا من المغرب العربي لا بأس ها؟ huh? It doesn't matter No harm That young man when the king wanted to kill him You know in the story صحيح When he was his family sending him to a magician and then he found a man who knew his Lord, godly man, and he started learning the deen from him. And he, he was interested in it. So when the king wanted to kill him, he told his soldiers, take him to a, ta to a peak of a mountain and try to throw him. They fell, he came back. Take him in the middle of the water, throw him in the ocean and bring him and come back. They drowned and he came back. And he will come back to him, to the king, not try to flee, not to be scared, not to run away. He can run away and hide, huh? find a cave, live in it until you die. Just like many other people. لا. He was a man of aqeed. He was a man of la ilaha illallah. He was a man who had a faith and belief. And he had to make sure that he can bring people out of the darknesses to the light. And that's the end of the story. 
that very intelligent king, he tells him, you want to kill me? The kid tells him, you want to kill me? Bring all the people, gather them, and take an arrow, and says, Bismillah Rabbil Ghulam, in the name of Allah. That's the king who used to say he's Allah. The kid tells him, say, Bismillah, the Lord of the kid. And then you will, you will kill me. So he shot it, he killed him. So the people became Muslim. People believed. That's what we're looking for. قُتِلَ أَصْحَابُ الْأُخْدُودِ النَّارُ ذَاتِ الْوَقُودِ إِذْهُمْ عَلَيْهَا قُلْ That is the trench. When, they, when he dig the trench and the fire in it, he let it in. And he who does not follow, does not return, throw him in it. So it's very important, if you are a man of aqeedah, to live up to that. Because as I always said, death is one. Whether you die in a motorcycle accident, whether you die when you're swimming in a pool, because eh? you don't know how to swim, and you think you, you can't float. Whether you die in an airplane, whether you die because you stand up for your principles, the death is death. But die with honor. And die so people can say, may Allah have mercy on his soul. Rather than to die, huh? where people, when they mention your name, they curse you out. So stand up for your deed. And this is our opportunity in this, in this country. And now it's the opportunity to strive, and to flourish, and to thrive. Now. Allah, now. This is the opportunity. We are peaceful people. We're very nice people. And I always say it, we're cute people too. <laughs> eh? We don't cause problems. We don't want problems. We just want to teach the people about our religion. We don't want them to be Muslim. We just want to educate them, right? We just want to educate them. That's what we're trying to do. So, in this fashion, huh, when you walk in a public place, like it happened, and there is a woman who's walking down the aisle with, his, with her daughter, 12, 10, 11, 12 years old. And when they come close to you, she tells her daughter, turn your face away, don't look. We just want to teach them that we don't bite, huh? that we're not uh, strapping uh, bombs around our waist. We're good people. That's what we want to do. We want to teach them. Right? And this is our opportunity. Now everyone, and subhanAllah, the Prophet wasallam said, that the Day of Judgment will not come until this religion enters every house. Every house. And it has. And it's been. And it's going. Huh? Will enter every house. And it's entering. Whether they like it or they don't like it. So my advice to myself, and my advice to you, huh, is be part of the effort. Be part of those who invite to, their, to the way of Allah, al-hikmah, wal-maw'idat al-hasan, huh, with the good word, the good advice. Huh? Someone, I don't know if I mentioned this here, last Friday, I don't think because this first time since then. Comes to my clinic. And there was a Muslim sister in the waiting room. Patient. American. American. So it seems he talked to her. And he's American too. So he comes in. I'm preparing my tools. <laughs> so he says, are you Muslim? I said, yes. He said, good religion. He said, I know. 
Be proud. He said, I know about it. I said, really? I said, yes. I said, very good. The man is in pain. So you want to rush it? So I start numbing him, huh? giving him anesthesia. He mumbled. He said something. Whether it's during the anesthesia or during the first tooth coming up. I stopped. I said, what did you say? He said, I think I want to become Muslim. <laughs> I said, I said, what did you say? Ah, and listen, these are once a lifetime opportunity. Right? How often that's going to happen? I've been taking people's teeth out for six years. That's the first time. So I'm not, letting, I'm not going to let it go. I stopped. I said, raise your finger. <laughs> Allah, Allah, he's bleeding. I said, raise your finger. Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah wa anna Muhammad rasul. Then I went back. Khalas. <laughs> Was he serious? Was he not serious? Is he going to live the rest of his life a real Muslim? Did he just become Muslim to get a discount? He didn't need to do that because he had insurance. Did he do that? Whatever the reason, I'm going to take advantage of the situation. If he, if I have, that was the reason to save him from the hellfire, alhamdulillah. If he was just playing around, no harm. I still got my money for the teeth out. <laughs> Understand? Take advantage. And this is the time. Wallahi, people are thirsty thirst to find a solution for their misery. Why famous people killing themselves, man? Actors and actresses and rich people are killing themselves every single day. Overdosed. Athletes on drugs and on alcohol and on, on prescription medications. Why? They're trying to run away from something. Their system is not providing them with this thing. You know what that is? Connection with Allah. Allah created you and He told you there is only one thing that will make your life good. One thing that will make your heart happy. One thing that will make your mind at peace. One thing. Allah says one thing. There is no second. Anything that you think gives you happiness, check it out. Check out if it gives you hap how long it gives you happiness after you do it. How long? Anything. Anything in the world. Anything. Whether it's kind of food, drink, women, music, this, that, cars, whatever. How many people? Huh? He will do anything to get this car. Tayyip, we're going to give it to you. Right? You sell cars, right? Do so you know what I'm talking about? I'm sure some people come to you. I want this car. I don't want anything else. This car. Don't, get, don't talk to me about Bentley and Benz. And all. I want this car. I'm in love with this car. You get him the car. Two months later, he comes back. Where's the Bentley? That's it. Any pleasure in the world, in this material world, anything. You are so dying to get it. Huh? Once you get it, you want what's next. You want the next thing. It's actually, it's enough shame and enough degrading in anything you get in this dunya. It's enough that you got it after you were not allowed to have it. You know what that means? You guys understand? No, I'll translate. يعني يكفي دناءة في الدنيا 
أنك ما حصلت عليها إلا بعد أن حرمتها يعني you were humiliated and degraded you like some you like this car but you didn't have it so the dunya humiliated you and degraded you at certain point and then said you know what take it so it's enough of no worth that I was humiliated before I got it and that's in everything in the dunya so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it clear your happiness you want real happiness بذكر الله 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 مقلب القلوب مصرف القلوب ها علام الغيوب الله he's the one who gives you happiness and that's what this world needs today and that's why they're fighting this religion because we want to bring people كما قال ربعي بن عامر to كسر he said نحن قوم ها نحن قوم تعثنا الله لنخرج العباد من عبادة العباد إلى عبادة رب العباد ومن جور الأديان إلى عدل الإسلام من كسرى the leader and the, the head of the, of, the, of the Persian armies as Rabi ibn Amr man from the desert with patch clothes he said what brings you here what brings you here they want to, to give the word of Allah and happiness to people he said, we are people Allah chose us. And leave that with you. Allah chose us to bring the people from worshipping the people to worship the Lord of the people. That's what we want. We want people to stop worshipping NFL. And we want people to stop worshipping MLB. And we want people to stop worshipping Hollywood. And we want people to stop worshipping Budweiser and Corona. That's what we want. Allah did not create you for this. Allah did not create you for this. Allah created you to worship Him. So that is what Rabbi ibn Amr said. Allah sent us to bring people from worshipping people to worship the Lord of people and to bring them out of the darknesses of religions to the light of Islam. That's it. Islam. That's what we need to deliver to the people. But how many people who try to do that, they cause more harm. How many Muslims who don't really understand, they try to spread or try to talk and invite to their religion, and they cause more harm. It's an opportunity. When Allah gives you the tawfiq, huh? and gives you the opportunity to talk to someone who's not Muslim about Islam, I mean, that is the most difficult step. Ask anyone who talks to someone about this. This is the most difficult step. To start the subject. After that, it flows. Either he tells you, I don't want to hear anymore, or he tells you, see you later, or he tells you, see ya, or he tells you, I will talk more. It's the first, the most difficult is the step. So imagine when Allah send you someone who tells you, oh, you're Muslim, tell me about Islam. You better be quick. Right? So inshallah, yeah, and this wasn't, uh, wasn't the topic or the book that was tonight. But, uh, yeah, and uh, this is, yeah, inshallah, something we can benefit from. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to benefit us with what we heard. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to teach us what we're ignorant of. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us to the straight path and to keep us on it, and to help us to thrive on it. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring peace, tranquility, and harmony into this world, and to bring happiness to everyone. And we know what happiness and how it comes about. قُلْ قَوْلِ هَذَا وَاسْتَغْهَرُ اللَّهَ لِي وَلَكُمْ وَصَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَى سِيدِنَا جَزَاكُمُ اللَّهِ